So you believe in reincarnation? Okay. So, so when you say reincarnation, does that mean we can come back as anything? It's a sad, sad thing to not have any hope going through life, just living life hopelessly, wandering, wandering around aimlessly, not believing in anyone or anything. It's sad. And Jesus wept for these people. And he cried. And he gave himself up as a sacrifice for our sins. Let's not play around with our lives, people. Let's understand that this life isn't a gamble. We're not gambling every day. We could pass at any moment, and we all know that we're gonna be held accountable for our deeds. Amen. That's why laws exist, that's why we have a conscience, and that's why there's good and evil. That's why we do nice things to people, but for what? We donate to donate to uh, charities, but for what? Why donate, why be nice if you don't believe in being held accountable when you die if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and God as your Savior. Look around you, there's so much pain, so much misery. Why? Why is it? A lot of people say it's because Jesus allows it and God created it. No, God created free will. God gave us the choice to be able to choose between evil and good. And unfortunately, a lot of people choose evil over good. That's why there's so much pain and so much suffering in this world right now. It's simple. It's because people choose evil. Let's stop choosing evil. Let's stop hating each other. Let's raise each other up. And let's believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because we know deep down everyone knows a lot of people act like they're happy and they're fulfilled. But they're not. There's a hole in a lot of people's lives. And you spend a whole lifetime gathering on this earth filling up your bank account, getting yourself a big house and a nice car, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you die and you don't take anything with you. Just like that man's shirt, walking dead. It's sad, because technically you are walking dead. He's not lying. His shirt says walking dead, and if he doesn't believe in Jesus, you are walking dead. If you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe in God, essentially you are a walking zombie. You just exist for the sake of existing. And one day you perish and you die, whether it's a quick death or a long death, you leave this earth, and then what? You go to nothing? You don't exist anymore? This is a fallacy. We all know this isn't true. Even the laws of physics prove this. The laws of thermodynamics state that energy can be neither created or destroyed. So if energy can be well, I believe in the destroyed part. It can be created because we believe in God, but it can't be destroyed. And part of the laws of thermodynamics believes in that. That energy cannot be destroyed. So if energy can't be destroyed, where does your energy go when you die? To nowhere? To thin air? To blackness? To being a cow? To being a caterpillar? To being a tree? Trees don't have a soul. Animals will eat their own cubs to survive. And they won't think twice about it. They don't feel bad about it. But we as human beings, we have a conscience, we have feelings, and we feel bad when we see pain and suffering, when we see people around us that are lost, that aren't living the right life, we feel bad. And that's why we're out here. We're out here to save people. We don't save people through our own power or through our own will, but hopefully, by the grace of Jesus Christ, we can witness and plant seeds and bring people to God. Life is not a joke. We all die. That's the one guarantee in life. People say the guarantee in life is taxes and death. That's false. The one guarantee in life is death. We're all going to die. We all know this. No amount of fornication, no amount of drugs, no amount of gambling, no amount of nothing will ever fill that hole or will ever protect you from death. You will die. And if you will die, you will be held accountable to someone, somewhere, something because we are intelligent design that has been created by an intelligent designer we didn't just appear by accident out of thin air we didn't just appear here to be here for the sake of being here 
We're here because we were created for a purpose, and that's to glorify God and to glorify Jesus Christ and to show that He is the ultimate creator and the ultimate controller of everyone and everything. God bless us all because we know, we know what really exists. Deep down, you can deny it as much as you want that God doesn't exist and that I'm fine and I'm powerful and you know a lot of people have grown really proud today a lot of people have grown proud and cocky because of the advancement of technology and that's why the Bible states that in the later days a lot of people will turn away from Christ and Jesus because they will grow proud why will they grow proud they're going to grow proud because of technology and because of life being easy and the comfort all around us they're going to grow proud and start believing in science and all sorts of demonology and horoscopes and witchcraft they grow proud and they think that we're God and that we're gods we're not gods there's only one God and one creator and we have to stop being proud and start humbling ourselves no amount of science will save you from cancer no amount of science can grow you a new limb or allow you to walk again if you're paralyzed but guess what Believing in Jesus and believing in miracles and the power of Christ can save you and can perform miracles in your life. I am a miracle. I used to be the worst of the worst, addicted to drugs, doing all sorts of demonic things and not caring. But here I am and if I can be saved, let me tell you, anyone can be saved. But you the power of Jesus Christ only. No amount of technology, we, we got to stop with this technology and this feminist movement all these feminists going around saying that they're loud and in charge and they don't need men anymore and that oh they have jobs and they're self-sufficient yes you're self-sufficient because God allowed technology and allowed civilization to advance to the point where we can live comfortable lives and we have technology all around us that makes the mundane our mundane work and labor a lot less intensive which is why a lot of females have grown proud and have conformed to this feminist movement which is false and demonic no one is better no one is greater feminists aren't greater females aren't better than men men aren't better than females just because men have walked around oppressing women doesn't mean they're stronger or better there's a role for women and there's a role for men in this life let us not forget that. We're not saying that females are any less than men or that they don't deserve as much as men, but they have their roles to play. If we lived in the Roman times, if we lived back in the times where the technology wasn't as abundant, it wouldn't be the same. You wouldn't have females walking around with their heads up saying that they're in charge and they don't need men anymore and they, don't, they can be self-sufficient. Yeah, you can be self-sufficient, but at the end of the day, you need a man in your life to be your companion and fill that hole. A lot of females, they're proud. They're loud and proud when they're young and they're good looking. But when they grow old and they hit their 40s, they become depressed, they become old, and they realize, what have I done with my life? I threw away my whole life. Yeah, you're young, you're good looking, live it up, party it up. You know, act like you know it all, but but at the end of the day, we all age and we all eventually grow old and frail. And at the end of the day, who are you left with? Oh God, You're gonna left to be so to die alone, to die alone with no one by your side. Feminist. Why? Because I'm a feminist. I'm a God bless you. God bless you. You see, this is this is an example right here. Mocking. Na 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 na. Well, I say na 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 to you when you die all alone and you have no one by your side to comfort you and no hope. And you know what, too? At the end of the day, 99% of people, when they die, guess who they turn to? When they're on their deathbed, ready to die in their last moments, guess what? Who do they turn to? You guessed it. God. Jesus. Everyone, when they're in a time of need or in a time of peril, they yell, Jesus Christ, save me. Oh, Jesus, what have I done? But why does it have to be always in the last moments? Why can't it be a life living and giving glory to God and not being stubborn? Everyone's stubborn, everyone's loud and in charge when they're healthy and good looking and they have nothing to lose. 
But as soon as you have something to lose, as soon as you realize that you're mortal and you're going to die, everyone calls out on Jesus. And everyone asks the Lord and God to come down and save them and perform a miracle. And yes, it's possible to receive miracles, but why would Jesus and why would God come down and listen to you when you've lived a life mocking Him non-stop and that's all you do, just mock and laugh. That's like me going to someone and being like, oh hey, yeah, you suck, ha ha ha, and then going back to that person when I'm in time of need and asking them to save me and help me out. Doesn't work like that. Yes, God can intervene and He's supernatural and He can change people and He can save people on the deathbed too. But very few people make it to their deathbed. A lot of people, one second they're here and then the next second they're not. They're gone. Just like a vapor, just like a wind. One second it blows, one second in here and one second it's gone. That's how we are. We're just flesh. We walk around and one second we can be here, one the next second we're gone. Thank you, well, what's sir. What's the new mix? Well, but what's the new? What's the new? Uh, what else should I believe in? Atheism? Should I believe that nothing came from? Everything came from nothing? Is that better? I'm sorry, sir. I don't want to be depressed for the rest of my life. I want to be happy. I want to have hope. I want to wake up every day believing in Jesus and believing. Hey, wow. You know what? No matter what happens in this life, no matter all the hard times I go through, no matter what's thrown at me, I'm, I'll be all right because I'm gonna die. And when I die. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be saved. And by the grace of God and His atonement on the Holy Cross, you're saved. And that's all we need to do. Believe in Jesus and profess Him as our Lord and Savior. And then bear the good fruits of being a Christian. And you're saved. We can't walk around pretending like we're loud and in charge and in control of everything because we're not. We don't control anyone or anything. A lot of people scoff and a lot of people make fun of Christian and say it's a 2,000 year old religion, it's a fairy tale. I mean, if Christianity is a fairy tale, then what is atheism? Atheism is worse than a fairy tale. You believe that literally everything came from nothing. There was a dot in a certain point of time that existed and then everything exploded and everything was... Like what? Are you kidding me? You want me to believe in that? That, I mean, look around you, everything that was designed, the cars come out of thin air, did a bicycle appear out of thin air, the clothes on your back, did they just appear out of nowhere? No, they didn't. There was an, a creator that created them, intelligent design. So if we have that example all around us, then where did we come from? We're infinitely complex. We have trillions of atoms in our bodies that com compose our whole bodies. Where did this come from? Obviously, there's an all almighty creator, intelligent designer that created us. Like, can you just sit there and say, oh, hey, well, cell phone, whoop, pops out of thin air. Oh, car, whoop, pops out of thin air. Well, that's what atheism preaches, that everything popped out of thin air. Come on, man, like, seriously? <laughs> and then people say that Christianity is a fairy tale. Anybody and Christianity is all 2,000 year old religion. Calls but then you want me to believe in atheism. Come on. Well, Seriously, it's atheism and it does Christianity. It's not that hard. Let's stop gambling with our lives here, people. Let's start waking up and realizing what's truly going on around us before it's too late, before you pass from this life to the other and you realize that your chance and your time is over. You know, sometimes I have dreams. I don't know if you guys have ever had dreams where you something bad happens to you or you die. Well, when I have these types of dreams where I die in my dreams and I, something bad has happened to me, and in my dream, if I'm not saved, it's the worst feeling in the world where you think you've died in an unsaved state. I can only imagine the terror. I can only imagine the regret of, of realizing that you're dead and that it's over for you and there's no more chance for you to get your life in order and there's no more chance for you to profess and believe in Jesus. It's the scariest feeling in the, that I've ever experienced and I've experienced this feeling in my dreams. I've experienced... Amen, brother. I don't believe in mantras. I believe in the Bible. But you know what? This is very similar to the Bible. Well, where does spirituality come from, sir? When, where do we come from? Come from the divine. Where does the divine come from? The Tao. Where it's the Tao? Is the unseen. You, you, you're beating you around the bush. You cannot touch it, you cannot see it, you cannot feel it, but it's the creator. You're beating around the bush. 
You just don't want to put a name to it, but you believe in God. I do. You're halfway there. I do. You're halfway I there. Have believe in, I have to believe in all religions and okay. all form of medicine. Okay, so if you believe in this God... Is, this is healing. This right. is healing. Absolutely, sir. But if you, believe, if you believe in God, right, then do you believe that if God is a true judge and He's true, do you believe you're worthy to enter the kingdom of God? If He's a true... Like, if God is just, if God is a true, just judge, are you worthy to enter the, His kingdom? You're not. If he's just, if God is just and he's perfect, you will, no matter what you do, you will not be allowed to enter the kingdom of God. Unless, there's a caveat to that, unless you believe in Jesus. Because Jesus came down and took... Let me tell you something. Jesus is not here. Sorry? Jesus is here right now. Where, where is he? Well, you stay connected with me and I will tell you where he is. Um, he's on the internet. Jesus is on the internet? Well, what do you mean? Like literally? No, no, like literally he's on the internet? He's representative. Yeah. But stay connected. Call me. Well, I mean, love, peace, and harmony. This is what Christianity, this is This is our, if you want to call it a mantra, we don't call it that, but that is, that's, that's, that, do you know what? The, Put it on, listen to it, and chant it. But do you know what the number one, do you know what the number one commandment in the Bible is? To love, love. your brother. Yes. Yes. Love. Yes. And forgive. Absolutely. And show compassion. Yes, sir. And bring the light. So you're a Christian. Praise God. No, I'm not a Christian. Hallelujah. I am not a Christian. Hallelujah, you're a Christian. You are, you believe in God. I, I believe in you all believe the in You believe in everything we believe in. You just don't want to put a name to it. I, I, God bless you, sir. I don't need to talk to you. You're a Christian. <laughs> no, because Hallelujah. Christians, Christians don't believe in reincarnation. Oh, they believe, no, they no, in, no, 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 sir. They believe in, in the sir. soul living forever, but okay, but okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I take that back. So you believe in reincarnation? Okay. So, so well, hold, just hold on, hold on. So when you say reincarnation, does that mean we can come back as anything? So who decides that? The divine. The divine? The divine. So the divine decides the divine to... The divine is the ultimate decision. So the creator created us one time, right? We, we exist now. And then he's going to what? He's going to tell us where we're going to go in the next life. But we can we come here to correct the mistakes that we made in the past life. But that doesn't make sense. You're created one time and one time only. That's it. You have one life, you're created once, and that's it. No. Yes. We live hundreds and thousands of lives. Oh, sir, this, this is... This, uh, not to, not so, to be, so you must have a very good memory. Yeah. Sorry? You I must have a really, good really... Good yeah. Because, I mean, life, you, you know what previous life... life a lot of mistakes. What, what did you I do? Knew. What kind of mistakes specifically did you make? Well, how do you in my previous life, I caused somebody to, um, to have a car accident and to break their body. No, please. Okay, please. And... And so in this lifetime, because I caused that for somebody else... That's the only thing you did in the past lifetime? It's the only really bad thing that when I you did. Say lifetime. And so, so in this lifetime, I'm having to live with those... What about the lifetime before that? What did you do? I don't... I haven't, I haven't, I haven't reached that point where I can see my Akashic records. That's Interesting. Because you know, one of the things we, I was asked, I find very difficult with... Uh, with uh, with our reincarnations is I, I have the card we we all we I got I'll, I'll look at this but what I find out is that if you didn't know what you did in the past life what do you, how do you know what to do in this life to make it better and uh, well, and tell you, me tell me and is your life that rosy this so that you don't make the same mistake all well, over again you see the divine brings us back here to learn to correct those mistakes no, but how that do we've you know made. when you don't have a memory how do you know? of that well you unless you have a perfect Perfect finances, perfect health, perfect relationships. Nobody has that. Well, then you've made mistakes. So that means every single person. That means you know, every one of us has made mistakes. Which is why, as Christians, we believe That's we're all sinful. That's why we're here. We're so that this is this is actually this is actually the reason why the the uh, the what you call it the, the you know the untouchables in India. Yeah. You know the, the untouchables. What were they called? Yeah, they have the lowest job of the whole caste system. Yeah. And what they are told is because you in that caste system because of what you did in your past life and your uh, and so okay. they're stuck in that part in that uh, caste system. Yeah. 
not unless they give something really ah really no no the gods people. are not happy with them that's the point that's why they're in that caste system the gods are not happy with them so they have to talking about the, uh, this guy on YouTube. they have to uh take what the the god dish out the the gods dish out for them because in their past life so yeah. it, that's why there's caste system in india because of these this I sin and caste system in india because the british no <laughs> no <laughs> the, the caste system existed way before, way before the, the british, british came there. actually the british yes to stop the caste that system. was that was hindu practices that's all linked to reincarnation do you know that though yeah you that's why that's why i'm when i i, I hear you talking it seems like you haven't looked deep in you haven't studied deep into it into reincarnation. i don't have to study it well, i don't have to study i'm not into religions I but mean, you are, I'm you are really, you are, you are really, you are religious, I'm connected with the you divine, are very religious. I am connected with the divine, almost I know. Four hours what a day, is, what is that seven called? Seven days a week, I'm a teacher. You are religious though, I am but a, you no, just, not, you're not, you're not acknowledging it. Can I just ask you this, one, like why, okay, but why, instead of believing in reincarnation, so here's the thing, instead of believing that you can come back as a leaf or a tree, why not believe, Please. No, but sir. I, I have the. Sir, I have no. what he yeah, says. Uh, yeah, I have one there. Why not the table. I will not take you, if you, I. You, if you what is so important life, about on. me believing in this or believing in that? Every soul is important. Listen, my job. God says, go preach, go preach the gospel. To if not, if it's not important, then you shouldn't years, believe what anything at all. Years ago, we should. Twenty-four years ago, I had a car accident. I drove my car into the front of a Chev half-ton truck. I spent six months in Hamilton General, and I and I asked heaven. I said, heaven. I'd like to recover from this physically, emotionally, mentally, but I've left out spiritually. 24 years later, I met Dr. Shaw, S-H-A. Uh, and he taught me how I had the power right. to heal myself. You have the power to heal myself. I so have, you the, have power. the power. So if you get cancer... I have the power okay, to heal myself. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me if ask I get you this. cancer, I can heal hold myself. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. So if I were to cut your arm off right now, you would have the power to grow a new arm? So you okay. don't have the power to heal yourself. Come on, you man. You're life. believing in a fallacy. A God bless life, you, brother. <laughs> you're almost there. You're almost there. Just come I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm I pray there. that Jesus works in your life, sir. What's your name? You're not on there. Oh, my card. You're not on there so yet, so. Almost there. <laughs> almost. Ah, ah. Interesting. Tell me, yeah. Did you know the second most popular book in the world? After the Bible? The Bible is um, the this uh, Bible Bible is, is, uh, uh, is um, Pilgrim's Pilgrim Progress. Actually, it's Pilgrim's Progress. Practitioner. The what Pilgrim's Progress. Hand? Look it up. I've never heard of a Tao hand in my it was, life. Uh, it was what a second do? bestseller after what the What is Bible. a Tao hand, sir? Explain a Tao Unless hand to me. That sounds right? like, like even worse than Scientology. What is a Tao hand? What does that do? What do you, you can't do anything with your you. If you fire to chop off your hand, you're not growing a new hand. What if you were to lose your hands? Okay, so if I converted to your religion and I lost my hands, I wouldn't be eligible anymore because you need to have Tao hands. It, said, it clearly states here, Tao hands practitioner. What if you have no hands? I can't do your religion anymore. You, do, you can do Tao head. <laughs> I mean, I just asked Tao him, head. you know, because I knew. I, first of all, I asked him, I said, okay, if you have cancer, will you be able to heal yourself? And I knew he was going to say yes. I knew he was going to say, if he has cancer, I can heal myself. But then I asked him, okay, if you lose an arm, can you heal your arm? Can you grow a new arm? Oh, no, I can't. I can't. And then he walked away and didn't want to talk thank to me God. anymore. Man, that's unfortunate. That's thank God. It's unfortunate these days, yeah. you know. A lot of people believe in fallacies and a lot of people believe in these teachings that make no sense. Like, towel hands? Like, what is a towel hand? Please, someone, can someone tell me what a towel hand is? Sir, do you know what a towel hand is? Well, we need to find out what a towel hand is, because because I don't, yeah, that's just weird. <laughs> Between towel hands and new age and atheism and believing in vibrations coming down, I mean, no wonder people are so confused. You have like 2,000 different, you can't even call them religions, their beliefs at this point. Between vi vibrations and towel hands and uh, coming back as a cow, one person believes a cow is holy, the next person believes that it's not holy. Then you have the Dome of the Rock, 
you have a sacred rock under a mosque and, and then it's holy, but then is other Islamists say it's not holy. Like, there's no clarity, there's no nothing. Like, I was talking to these Muslim brothers earlier and I was telling them, like, what, is there a guarantee in your religion that I will enter heaven? Is there a guarantee in your religion that says, black on white, follow these requirements and you will inherit the kingdom of God? And they said, no, it's only if Allah wills it. That means you can live a perfect life, but if Allah doesn't will it for you to enter whatever they call heaven, you're not going to get there. You can, like Brother Michael was saying, you can be one cubit away. They believe you can be one cubit away from the kingdom of heaven. If Allah doesn't will it, you're not getting there. That's not a religion I want to follow. That's scary. I don't want to live every day thinking, will I actually make it? Like, well, can I live a perfect, even if you live a perfect life, you still can't make it. Because Islam is based all on deeds. It's based, and you'll never have perfect deeds and you'll never be perfect. But this is what I'm saying. These religions, they're so confusing. There's so much confusion. And you know what? One of the devil's number one tactics is confusion. That's why with the, with the advent of social media and the advent of TV and this and that, there's so many people that are seeking attention. There's so many people that want to be somebody. So guess what? They sit there like Al Hubert, Ron Bubert from Scientology. They, in one night, they write a book. They say you're from planet Klotas. What the Mormons believe, you're from planet whatever. Like, dude, like, come on, man. We already know. They, 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 it's, it's, it's all a fallacy. It's all false. Like, people, people need to understand that there's pride and people want to be someone so they come up with all these demonic teachings to try and fool people. This is a tactic the devil uses. It's called confusion. We have to stop being confused and we have to stop being influenced and stop believing that something is true because some charismatic speaker, someone that you look up to said, hey, uh, what is it, Tao Hands, Tao hands are going to heal you, and because you think he's cool, and because he's charismatic, yeah, I'll believe Tao hands heal me. We got to stop doing this. We're too gullible as human beings. Let's do the research for ourselves. Let us open the Bible.